Jerry Savelle, Jerry Savelle knew how to dress really well, didn't he? <laughs> Yes, he did. In fact, I remember the first time I met him, it was uh, Brother Richard Roberts, my dear friend, that introduced me on a surprise dinner. I walked in, and Brother Jerry reached his hand out, and he goes, nice to meet you, Brother Kenneth Copeland. Jesus is Lord. And I started laughing, and I took a step back, and he goes, no, Hank, it really is nice to meet you, but he always dressed nice. I commented one time. He said, hey, he goes, I know, because if you've seen me, and he points up, you seen my dad. It's all in our genes. <laughs> and, uh, but I got to say this one thing about Brother Jerry very quickly, and that is back in 1989 when Brent and I were first um, married, even when we were engaged, we would come on Sunday night. I'd go to her house when we would watch the Believer's Voice of Victory. Uh, Brother Copeland was the first one I heard. And then one night there was a man preaching, Jerry Seville, and he preached a message that changed my life. It was back in like 1989, and it was this, if the devil cannot steal your joy, he cannot keep your goods. And Brother Jerry, if you can hear me, thank you for your love, but thank you what you imparted into my life. What a great man of God. He will dearly be missed. And lastly, I always want to know what oops, I think it was oops, looked like. You remember the story he talked about oops that pulled out that money when he couldn't afford his uh, one meeting? I think it was in like a uh, wash machine place or something like that. And I always loved hearing him tell his stories. And he always brought me to a whole nother level of faith. And I owe my word of faith background to him. And Brother Copeland yeah. as well. Amen. Amen. And, and I too have uh, great memories. Uh, the last time we were trying to buy a house, and uh, Jerry Savelle, we weren't trying. We had tried to buy a house, and they turned down our offer. They got a different offer. And he preached on church Sunday morning about uh, standing up and saying, Lord, I, he was talking about his own land and the deals that he had made, saying, oh, That's the house I want. I need to have that house. And when you know what, that afternoon we got the call, the house was available. And we moved into it. It was a great, so great lessons of faith. Of course, Brother Copeland does that, but Jerry Savelle had his own way. And boy, we, he will definitely be missed, but we celebrate where he is. I, that's why death has no sting is because we know where he is. And today he was, he was somewhere preaching the gospel and he went home. What a better, could not have been a better way to go. So thank you, Jerry Savelle. Jerry Savelle, 1946 to 2024 just a piece of it. Uh, this is from October 15th, 2023. And so my spirit shall restrain, I shall strain, restrain the mouth of the dragon. I'll restrain the claws of the bear and I shall once again put my thumb upon the mouthy one who will raise his lips and his mouth in North Korea. And God says, I'll say to you, Iran, you will try and there will be that which will be seen in the air. But I will strike down the attempts that you will be uh, put in your place and you will be embarrassed. That will lead to a great uprising within your nation, Iran, that will cause a regime change that the earth will see and behold that God is the God of the kings of the earth. Let me read this last part. What are you looking at? What are you expecting? What do you believe the outcome shall be of the events that are in the earth? I've already told you I have promised something to honor to the honor of my son and his blood. Pastor Hank, uh, your comments. Well, I think first and foremost, the Lord has been dealing with, you know, us that this is, was coming, these strikes against Israel. And I think about a prophecy that I have here. I'm just glancing at April 16th of 2023. And the Lord said that there would be strikes that would come against Israel and there would be the sound of war that would come against them. But God said, April 16th of 2023, that this would not be the war to end all things, that we, the people of the earth, would see the power of God. I look at another prophecy, April 7th of 2024. This is a week before God said he's prophesied prophesying about preservation in the earth. And all of a sudden he switches and God begins to prophesy about Iran that would raise their head in this time and not to be moved by it because it would cause a retaliation by the hand of God to protect Israel, but to deal with the headship of Iran. And that's what you're seeing, even with the prophecy that you shared from, I think it was 2023, October 15th. God is saying he's going to protect Israel. He's going to strike down their enemies. And what we cannot have is the mouthy spirit like what was on Goliath, where Israel or 
the United States, who are Israel's allies, do what Israel did when Goliath was shooting off their mouth. They did nothing. They stayed in there. Even King Saul, they were afraid until David arose and said, you know what? To Jesse's point earlier, we are going to do something about this taunting of this Goliath, this enemy, and we're going to cut him down. And once David rose up on behalf of the nation, the rest is history. And God did something powerful, and he's going to do it again. So don't be in fear, those of you that are watching. God has this, and war is real, but listen, so is the divine intervention and preservation of God, and we need to continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but also for God's mighty hand, because he is judging and dealing with wickedness in this hour and bringing about such a glory that is going to give in that prophecy the harvest to Jesus that he deserves, the biggest one this right. earth has ever seen. All right, Mike Garofalo's got an update. Mike, Gene, this the Iran attack and all the yeah. people that are involved. Go ahead. All right. Well, let me make a very quick comment. I think what we have to remember is, you know, I ran into somebody who said, well, what are we going to do? This Biden administration, you know, if you bless Israel, you're blessed, you curse them, you're cursed. We're, we're in trouble. I said, wait a minute. What about all the seeds that President Trump sowed towards Israel during his administration? God counted that. And we're going to see preservation. So we need to get on the side of faith and not on the side of fear. I want to also say this. Marilyn Hickey taught me something because she's been to Iran and even in China. She said there's a lot of praying Christians in Iran and in China. And God said something about Iran. He said, you will see as a sign that the veil upon the women's faces shall come off. And when you see that happen, get ready. Iran would raise their head and begin to come against Israel. This is all documented prophecies. And God said, but when you see it, I will use it to honor the praying church in Iran as well, that there is going to be a regime change and a great shakeup that'll happen in Iran. And it's about to happen in China. Father, Psalm 121, we hold you to this, the God who does not sleep or slumber. You said, you are the God that keepeth Israel. And so we pray that you would keep Israel by the power of your hand and by the angelic hosts of heaven who are at your command. And we pray that you would release wisdom now to those in Iran or, or, or those in Israel right now, that there would be the wisdom of God, that they would be led by your spirit to know exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And God, it shall be with great force that shall back off the the bully and that Goliath spirit and bring down these principalities and powers that desire to bring the Middle East, but the nations into war. We speak and declare that the enemy and his power is restrained and bound that he will not be able to preempt war. We pray for your mercy and lastly, your grace and preservation of all innocent involved, even in Iran and other countries, but also Israel. May you bring the breakthrough. May you bring the divine preservation that is needed at this time that we will see the peace, your peace, shalom over Jerusalem, over Israel. And God, do not let the people be brought to fear, but to faith as we look up, for our redemption draweth nigh, as Yeshua taught us in Luke 21. Amen. Amen. Others went in and turned around and walked back out. This is the uh, America that we're suddenly dealt with, Hank. Well, and I, I think we have to look at what happened in Judges 5 when the, you know, the nation was choosing new gods, taking shortcuts. Um, somebody rose. Deborah arose as a mother in Israel, and God used her to absolutely set the nation free. And I think about a prophetic word that God said before this decade. He said the decade would start off harsh, and then we would wind up in the rest. And look at what God does. He chooses a man, who Mike Lindell, to arise at this time, just like Deborah did. And notice what God did. The Lord used the word rest. He takes a man, Mike Lindell, and starts a pillow fight, so to speak. In other words, they started a pillow fight. God gets in the fight, I should say. But guess what, Mike? All of this that you've been standing for is going to bring not only yourself, but this nation into rest. And it's no coincidence that God gave you a wonderful, wonderful pillow company. I love your church. Slippers. And it's got to start with yes, pastors. And I know that we're, I, I'm still in shock. I keep thinking, we're, I know we're making headway. 
But then it seems like as soon as I find out we're making headway, then, you know, there's somebody that does something really stupid at a church, and it's the pastor usually that's showing that he's not a leader at all. If anything, if he's not woke, he's leaning woke and because uh, they're trying to protect their offerings. At least that's what it seems like. Um, speak to that. You're, you're the senior pastor. What do you do? Well, I just love Jesse's commentary tonight. I, I totally agree. We have got to stand up and we have to make a difference. I quoted to uh, Mike Lindell when I was talking about Judges 5, and that's one of the things you see in Judges 5, verse 2. Watch this, Pastor. It says, when the leaders of Israel bravely led, the people willingly followed. Here's the thing we have to remember when we are called as pastors or leaders. We are called to be servants. And if you're going to be a servant, you have to take on what Jesus did in the book of Philippians. He made himself of no reputation. If you're concerned about your reputation, you will never stand for what is right and what will cause ridicule or those to hate you or threaten you or such. The other thing is he began to humble himself. And I think there are some of us that need to humble ourselves and realize that in order to keep our country uh, in the hands of God and in the hands of moral rightness, we're going to have to humble ourselves, serve God and serve our country regardless of what they threaten, regardless of what they call us, because ultimately we have God's backing. Lastly, Pastor, if I may, you had uh, the thing about President Trump. You know what's going to happen? I'm telling you, when they turn the heat up seven times hotter for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace, guess what it did? It produced the fourth man, like the Son of God. The more they keep turning up the heat against President Trump, against uh, those in our country who are standing, it's going to continue God's divine intervention, and he's going to release his righteousness and his justice, and never forget what God said about these indictments, people. Watch this. He said they'll be like feathers. And one by one, they're all going to begin to fall. And we've seen it, and we're going to see it going forward. So stay strong, speak right, use your faith, and watch what God will do to show up in the times when it seems like the heat has been turned up hotter. All right.